They should really make a game out of this. Death Stranding is one of the most fascinating games in the history of the medium. Is it because it's absolutely chock full of incredible things to analyze? No. Is it because it had a development cycle unlike any other? Maybe it did have that, but no. It's simply because it has a level of self-confidence that I have never seen matched. This confidence is clear in both the game itself and its marketing, but it's also very apparent why it exists in the first place. If we go all the way back to the start of this whole charade, the creator of Death Stranding, Hideo Kojima, was one of the most legendary game creators ever, with his critically acclaimed Metal Gear series setting the world on a fire with every single entry, and his demo for the next step in the Silent Hill franchise, P.T., was also a landmark title. It was probably the most famous demo in gaming history. Everyone had lots of confidence in and love for Kojima, which feels justified due to his track record of massive, innovative games. So when he was unfairly fired from the villainous Konami after years of amazing work and announced his own, brand new production company, many people were immediately sold. Their first project was revealed to be Death Stranding, a movie that would be full of weird stuff and break the boundaries of all other pieces of media before it to create a brand new genre, the Strand One. Wait, what's that? It was a game? Well, you can't necessarily blame me for making that mistake, as really all that was shown of the game were cryptic cutscenes that had practically no regard for showcasing gameplay. Personally, I found this to be concerning as there was absolutely no reason to hide the defining aspect of a video game unless it was totally mind-numbingly awful, and that would be ridiculous. Most people, however, were still sold on the game despite this and despite mediocre scores from even the most paid-off, spineless pansies like IGN, mostly due entirely to the name Hideo Kojima being attached to it, which in my opinion is completely completely disgraceful both as a principle for the video game industry and the entire idea of a purchasing decision. It was eventually shown that the gameplay would literally consist only of delivering packages and sometimes doing basic stealth and gunfighting, and we'll get to that soon enough, but first I want to just say to anyone who knew that the gameplay looked boring and yet still bought the game just because of who made it, shame on you. It's up to you to buy what you wish, yes, but the principle of buying something that doesn't even look good to you just because you like the person who made it must die, so stop letting it live on. Before I start talking all about this game and giving my judgment on it, I want to say that I didn't manage to beat this game. It was physically and mentally exhausting to keep playing it over and over just to get through it so I only managed to play through 15 hours. But that's how long I played Heavy Rain for, so I believe that is totally fair. If the game's quality is literally inverted after the 15 hour mark, then great, let me know. But I'm going to judge what I play, because 15 hours is plenty to spend on something and expect it to be at least decent within that time. I'm not going to keep punishing myself for hours and hours just in the hopes that the last 20 minutes will blow my mind because that's not worth it at all. But now that I have gotten that out of the way, let's get into why Death Stranding might actually be the worst game I have ever played. I'll be totally honest, the presentation of this game is quite impressive, though I'm not a fan of its other aspects. The visuals and music are legitimately excellent. The visuals are breathtaking, taking you through multiple different locales with rich environments and beautiful details. It's really pleasant just to look at everything, and even from the opening cutscene, it's a very impressive game graphically. There is, however, a stunning lack of visual variety. In my 15 hours of playing, there were really only like five different looking areas, green glades, mountains, deserts that look like Mars, and mountains but with snow. And one time I was in a forest as well. Sounds great, doesn't it? You'll be in pretty samey looking and feeling areas for long periods of time, and for a game with such a beautiful general look, it's honestly just shameful and idiotic to not add more variety. 
When you have created an amazing foundation like this and you relegate the areas to five basic archetypes, you have failed to live up to your potential. Animations and character models are extremely impressive during cutscenes, and they do a phenomenal job of capturing the actors' essences to make you feel more immersed in the world. But it's really sound that is the best part of this whole game. The sounds around you as you go through the world, whether totally organic and natural or futuristic and based in technology, are relaxing and incredibly immersive. When you're just walking around through the world and basically hiking while listening to everything around you, it can be very peaceful for a while. And even though that effect isn't exactly appropriate for this game, which I'll explain later, it's still one of the highlights. And I'll be honest, whenever they played a song as I was carrying out an order, it made said order ten times more enjoyable. These songs are perfectly suited to the world and work by themselves due to the same exact peaceful atmosphere that the game and sounds have. This is an incredible soundtrack, both with the faded and subtle lyrical songs that perfectly accompany you on your long, arduous journey through annoying terrain, as well as the downright awesome futuristic songs that go along with the combat encounters and more exciting story moments. In fact, the music is so amazing that I'd like to let you just listen for a moment before I start digging into the game in a fit of rage. The machine that wrote my parents keeps me Isn't that nice? Well, enjoy it, because the rest of this review will not be so peaceful. First off, the voice acting is actually alright. Most of the time, the actors do a good job, probably because many of them are real actors. But there are many points where the material they have to work with is so boring that they become somewhat monotone. I'd say most of them do a really good job considering the writing, but Fragile and the Cairo artist, on the other hand, have some of the worst performances I have ever seen in a modern video game. Fragile is not only annoying as hell, but the way she delivers her lines feels so robotic, so stilted, that I honestly wouldn't be put off if you put her voice lines in a heavy rain for God's sake. And the Cairo artist? I don't even know why they love this person in the game, because her performance is so weak and terrible. It's used for one of the most emotional scenes that I saw in the whole game, and it ends up ruining any chance of emotion I could have felt during it, because I don't feel like I'm interacting with a human, but rather with a cyborg. So in general, the presentation here is pretty mediocre. The graphics are very impressive, but are put to almost no good use, even in the most lavish and interesting areas. The sound and music are great in nearly every way, but the inconsistent and monotonous dialogue really ends up hurting the presentation to the point that I can't even hail it as a highlight that sticks out. Normally I review the gameplay of a game and then end off with the story, but I've decided to swap things around for reasons that should become clear to you as we go on. But anyway, let's dig into the story of Death Stranding. The story here is an incredibly promising concept, in all honesty, pushing themes of reconnection, isolation, loneliness, and using the separation of the United States as a really apt metaphor for our own personal ways of closing off from one another. This is a fantastic premise to create a story, and I have no doubt that with a talented writer this could really be brought to life with amazing characters and ideas that reflect parts of this theme to make something truly special. Unfortunately though, the writer behind this game was not a talented writer, or at least didn't use any potential talent to make this story. Hideo Kojima is a legend, and I cannot take that away from him, but the dialogue and writing here that he made is so unbelievably disappointing and bad that I can for sure say he was not the right fit to write this game. 
the story of Death Stranding is one that should very clearly be influenced mainly by characters and connecting with them. But it actually isn't at all. While we do get chapters that are meant to focus in on one specific character, the ones I experienced were really just full of orders that had some vague, weak connection to the character and then ended off with a few cutscenes to desperately try and make you like them before you stop interacting with them nearly as much. It's an incredibly weak, forced way to cut down on real storytelling and force you to play the game a lot more. In many other games with good stories, you actually play through parts with those characters and get multiple cutscenes and bits of dialogue to explore them, so it feels like they're truly there with you. In Death Stranding, though, we just get the characters spewing science fiction gibberish into our ears as we play and occasionally shoving some tragic backstory into our face that's extremely ham-fisted and on the nose with its connection to one of the story's many weird ideas. For a game all about connecting with people and rebuilding the world and country after a tragedy tore us apart, the gameplay is completely and totally lonely. You can make the argument that the game is all about isolation, and it is at the start, but you're supposed to gradually start making connections with people, and because we never feel that with the actual characters we're meant to like during the gameplay or even really during cutscenes because most of the time they're just freaking holograms who tell you what menial task you must do next, it feels completely disjointed. Instead of having lonely gameplay throughout with the story all about becoming less lonely, how about you have them feel more fluid and connected? Instead, the cutscenes feel like they're from some science fiction movie and the gameplay is a literal hiking simulator with a completely dead, boring world. The themes aren't represented well by a connection to the player, a connection to gameplay, or a connection to any of these characters. But are they at least well conveyed and the focal point of the story? Nope! This story, like I said, has a fantastic premise that could really make for something brilliant if done right. But these themes are pushed into the way background in order for all of this insane, futuristic nonsense to take the center stage rather than the dialogue telling us important information about the world around us and how it got to be like this, 80% of it is used to hammer in the same boring, tedious information about everything around you, mostly the stuff that I don't even care about. Rather than having all of this stuff explained to me before every single order, how about it's just in a tutorial or mission summary? But instead, all of the insignificant details have to be explained, so those things make sense, and there's no longer any mystery or subtlety, while the actually interesting ideas and the themes that made the story fascinating from the start are ignored and treated as if they don't exist. There was quite a bit of dialogue about reconnecting America at the beginning, but most of it focused just on saying make us whole again or the other phrases that kept being repeated throughout, rather than actually showing us how we got there, the stakes that exist, and why we should even care. Instead, they put little droplets of character and life throughout the playthrough, but none of them feel strong enough when so isolated to really make an impact. Just like how the entire tone and style is meant to feel, all of the aspects of the storytelling feel isolated. But that just means they have no stable connection to make things work. Maybe, just maybe, isolation should be shown by what happens in the story, rather than by the story itself being a complete mess. Compare this to Horizon on the game side of things and Alien on the movie side. Horizon has you connect with all of the characters through meaningful missions while connecting them to the tribes who are really fleshed out in how they work, the values they have, and the themes that each of them emphasize. We see true stakes and the effect it has on everyone in the world as we desperately try to save the world in the game and fight against threats that are representative of real-world issues, such as inequality, oppression, greed, and climate change. Alien, just like Horizon and Death Stranding, invites us into a world quite different from our own. But like Horizon and unlike Death Stranding, it leaves everything that is important to know for the sake of storytelling to be explained, and everything minor that distracts from the important details to be mysterious, drawing us into the world further. It also connects to our own world with its themes in an actually intelligent way, using likable characters and engaging dialogue to make everything sympathetic, 
Death Stranding simply looks incompetent in comparison to any actually good story, whether in a game or a movie. There's way too much dialogue and way too many cutscenes, and like I said, none of it feels useful. The characters suck, the dialogue ranges from cringy to boring and repetitive, it takes too much time to do anything while still not answering the questions I actually cared about, it doesn't give us any ambiguity or mystery in the areas where that's necessary, the themes are handled really poorly and aren't given time or an environment in which they can flourish, and the pacing does absolutely nothing for such a complex narrative that emphasizes personal connections. But maybe, just maybe, the walking gameplay can shock us all and be the saving grace of this game. After all, the cutscenes and dialogue can all be skipped, so this is what really matters. So let's give Death Stranding one final chance to redeem itself. Death Stranding has horrible gameplay. I don't need to beat around the bush here, so let's just get into why this is some of the absolute worst gameplay ever conceived. First off, it's mostly just walking. I don't know how much clearer I can make that, but even I was stupid enough to think that it couldn't just be walking for so many hours. But boy, was I wrong. There are tons of mechanics that you have to keep track of while walking, such as your health, footwear condition, baby stress level, battery level if you're wearing a support skeleton, stamina, endurance, route, and cargo weight. It's an absolute overload of stuff to keep track of, but because it's placed in a situation so boring and simplistic, most of them don't really matter or do anything other than be annoying. Walking around has got to be one of the worst aspects of every game. Traversing around areas is never fun when you're simply walking around. It can be super fun to get around an open world, such as with the glider and grapple hook archetypes of Horizon Forbidden West and the Batman Arkham games, the motorcycle in Days Gone, or the swinging in Spider-Man. But in Death Stranding, though you occasionally have vehicles, you'll mostly just be walking around. You'll have to deal with all of the mechanics I talked about before, but truly none of them play an interesting or engaging role in the gameplay. And they, just like the whole game, aren't really challenging, just annoying, and do nothing but slow you down. I didn't die in the game once, and very rarely failed an order because it was so mind-fryingly simplistic and easy. But I was constantly annoyed by how boring it was. For example, the enemies of the game aren't any threat at all apart from making you take a few more moments to get your packages back, because this game is so horrible that even the developers knew the best punishment for failure was to make you play more of it. They took the slowest, most boring part of most games and turned it into the main chunk of the gameplay while making combat a very minor fragment of it. You don't really fight that much at all, and when you do, it's incredibly weak. On a technical and mechanical level, it's about five years behind the first Uncharted, with very little variety or challenge at all. The bosses rarely even hit me, despite being stuck in goop that prevented me from really moving at all. So after just throwing a few grenades at them, the pathetic weaklings just died. Regular BTs, which are pretty creepy, awesome ghosts during the game's opening that seem like tense threats at first, pose slightly more of a threat, as if you can't outrun them or shake them off, they'll drag you away from your packages. Though I almost never got caught by them, and I was literally able to outrun them even with very little stamina while in heavy snow that made it really hard to move. You're supposed to use stealth here, but without being able to see them or really get an accurate reading on where they are, all the stealth segments are is a way to make you move even slower to your destination. Yet another example of this game being so unbelievably lazy and pretentious that the only engagement it can offer is moving around at a snail's pace. I think it's very clear why this game came out so quickly after Kojima was fired, because the gameplay is practically nothing. He essentially made a prototype for a game without any real challenge, intrigue, or combat, claimed it was a brand new genre, and people who think he could do no wrong ate it up. In fact, I wouldn't be shocked if he just took what he was planning for Silent Hills and then took out all of the combat and stuff that would make the game resemble that franchise in P.T. Even when fighting the more aggressive human enemies, there really is no threat to be found other than in the segments that take place in the past, as those are very lacking in checkpoints. So really, the gameplay is just walking 90% of the time, and while it's sometimes relaxing to hear the sounds and 
listen to the music, the world is so dead, and the climbing is so frustrating, that getting anywhere that isn't across a field is a nightmare. And no, it's not a rise in difficulty, it's just making you take more time to go around something to get to your destination. And there's essentially no variety in the orders, with the only true differences being your destination, which very often repeats itself, and the cargo, which really only is special a few times throughout. After getting through a hellscape of a mission that made me take a 30 minute long detour because I was carrying a person on my back and couldn't cross a damn river because apparently the moronic main character never learned how to swim, I kept pushing through the missions in the mountains. But when one of them came along, I could not keep going. I had to go from a new area in the southwest to another new one in the northwest for one order with the very next one then require me to go the same route back just to get the cargo and then go back again to deliver it. It's a tedious, monotonous, mundane piece of trash. This mission, actually, no, this whole game is a slog. There is no enjoyment to be had. It's the antithesis of fun, enjoyment, and escapism. Nothing about this gameplay is good. Heavy Rain is boring. Jack 2 and the unofficial Strider 2 are frustratingly hard, but this game is frustratingly boring. It reaches a new level of terrible that I never knew was possible, combining infuriating mechanics that do nothing but stretch out the game with boring gameplay that has almost nothing to do other than, ironically, glorified QTEs to balance your weight, and on top of that, a pretentious tone and a story that fails in every considerable way. This is... Oh my god, it, it really is. This is the Alien 3 of video games. Yeah, a pretentious story too desperate to achieve what so many others have while not putting in the work to be inventive or creative enough to itself function. A lack of visual variety, very little actual action to keep things interesting. The main parts of it being a complete slog and full of parts so ridiculously awful and poorly done that I want to rip my hair out. And for both Alien 3 and Death Stranding, the only truly great thing is the music. Though the opening cutscenes of this game are spectacular, the rest is one of the worst experiences I've had holding a controller, a keyboard, whatever. It's one of the worst pieces of media to ever exist in my opinion, and a major contributing factor to that is the gameplay, due to how unapologetically boring it is. In the end, Death Stranding is a game I have practically no expectations for, yet it managed to disappoint me. It sunk to an impossible low and is one of the biggest blunders in gaming history, especially due to how much potential it wasted. Hideo Kojima, Norman Reedus, Guillermo del Toro, and countless other talented people spent years working on this game, and for what? An enraging hiking simulator with a god complex? Truly, this is a tragedy. The visuals are good, but used for almost nothing truly creative. The voice acting is massively inconsistent. The characters are unlikable and boring as hell. The dialogue is the equivalent of your grandpa ranting during Thanksgiving dinner. The themes, while promising, are used in a laughably stupid and inept way. And most importantly, the gameplay is some of the worst to ever exist especially in a AAA video game that acted so much like it was above everything else and something unique. I don't have much more to say, but I think one last phrase will perfectly summarize everything I have said. I would rather play through Heavy Rain three more times. No, no. I would rather get the Platinum Trophy in Heavy Rain than play through one more chapter of Death Stranding. Yeah. And at the end of this review, I held out hope that this game would be good, because the song made by my favorite band, Churches, for it is absolutely incredible, and I could have made maybe the best montage I have ever done, but I physically can't due to how awful this dumpster fire is. True misery will befall anyone who plays this game and has real taste. That's the only warning I should need to offer you. So in the end, 
I recommend listening to the song Death Stranding, but I do not by any means recommend playing the game Death Stranding. The fact that 5 million people bought this and many acclaimed it while crapping all over many amazing movies and games at the same time is insulting. Because this, without a doubt, takes the new title for the worst game I've ever played. And though I've changed what my pick for that is quite a few times now, I don't know if I'll ever find a game worse than Death Stranding. This is the culmination of garbage, and finding something worse would honestly be incredible. 0.5 out of 5.